ओके तो अ वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल ऑफ यू ठीक है तो टुडे वी हैव अ सेशन विथ क्वालिफाइड एक्चुअली मिस आरुषि मोदी एंड ओके शी हैज शी हैज रिसेंटली क्वालिफाइड ऑल द फिफ्टीन एग्जाम्स जैसे हम लोग के टाइम पे ऐसा नहीं होता था कि तेरह एग्जाम दी और क्वालिफिकेशन आ गया तो हम लोग के टाइम पे पंद्रह पेपर होता था ठीक है आई एम स्टिल गिविंग एग्जाम्स तो जो तुम्हारा सर अभी भी एग्जाम दे रहा है ठीक है एंड एंड देखो जैसे कोई भी चीज को जब हम लोग स्टार्ट करते हैं राइट तो उसमें क्या है कि तुम लोग को एक सामने जब हम लोग रास्ता में जब चलते हैं तो हम लोग को सामने का थोड़ा दूर तक का दिखता है फिर उसके आगे का नहीं दिखता है राइट धुंधला हो जाता है फिर थोड़ा सा जब तुम आगे बढ़ता है तुमको आगे का दिखता है राइट तो वेन वेन आई स्टार्टेड उस समय ऐसा ही था वेन आई स्टार्टेड एट दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम उतना ज्यादा अवेयरनेस नहीं था लाइक आई न्यू पीपल दो रफली फोर पेपर्स फाइव पेपर्स उससे आगे पता नहीं था लाइक वॉट इज द पाथ ठीक है हम लोग किस रस्ते पे चल पड़े हैं ओके okay, सो so, आज जैसे मेरे को भी अभी मेरा एक पेपर बचा है given my 14th exam, मेरा एक पेपर अभी भी बचा है बट शी हैज डन इट ऑल एंड द बेस्ट पार्ट इज इन अ टाइम बाउंड मैनर जो मैं हमेशा स्ट्रेस करता हूं लाइक वॉट डिफ्रेंशिएट्स आर इंस्टीट्यूट स्टूडेंट्स विद रेस्ट इज कि मैंने आपको हमेशा सिर्फ एक चीज सिखाया है कि कोई भी चीज को जब हम लोग कर रहे हैं तो अगर उसको तीन महीना करने का टाइम है तो हम लोग को उसको तीन महीने में ही करना है आप लोग जब आते हो एडमिशन के लिए देन द कॉमन क्वेश्चन दैट इज आग्स चीज की हो जाएगा ना उतना ज्यादा प्रेशर प्रेशर का तो कोई बात नहीं है नो वन एज फोर्स यू इन टू दिस कोर्स राइट वी एज काउंसिलर्स थोड़ा बहुत कभी हम लोग मोटिवेट कर देते हैं एक्स्ट्रा ठीक है बट ऐसा नहीं कि आपको किसने फोर्स किया इट्स योर करियर पाथ ठीक है एंड टू गेट द बेस्ट आउट ऑफ इट द मेन थिंग इज टू कीप ऑन क्लियरिंग द एग्जाम्स ठीक है ना एंड अभी जैसे आप लोग सब फर्स्ट ईयर में हो कोई सेकेंड ईयर में होगा सम वन इज इन थर्ड ईयर इन सर्च ऑफ अ जॉब सम वन हैज ऑलरेडी ग्रेजुएटेड ठीक है तो आई हैव बीन थ्रू ऑल दी फेजेस एंड शी हैज ऑल्सो बीन थ्रू ऑल दी फेजेस आई हैव नेवर वर्क इन द इंडस्ट्री एंड शी इज वर्किंग इन वन ऑफ द टॉप बिग फोर्स so there are some restrictions as i told you you cannot ask the company name you cannot ask the salary scale okay and also some specifics related to job okay so we have some limitations right so to start with uh she is a qualified frm also and uh, like and all the papers it's not that ki sabka ek bar mein aaj jaise hum log jab kuch start karte hain तो ऐसा लगता है कि सारा चीज एक बार में नहीं हुआ तो क्या होगा ऐसा नहीं है कि एक बार में ही आपका सारा चीज हो जाएगा शी हैज फेल्ड शी हैज फेल्ड इन द मोस्ट इजीएस्ट एग्जाम आल्सो एंड द डिफिकल्ट एग्जाम आल्सो ऐसा भी है सो फॉर दोज दो हैव गिवन द एग्जाम्स रिसेंटली अगर आप फेल हो जा रहे हो आई हियर सम क्वेरीज की नहीं भी अब हम आगे नहीं देंगे इट्स नॉट लाइक दैट ओके लाइक इफ यू टॉक अबाउट मी आई वॉज अ वेरी एवरेज स्टूडेंट ठीक है एंड जैसे जो पाथ होता है इट वॉज वेरी डिफिकल्ट लाइक पेइंग द ट्यूशन फीस एट दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम वॉज वेरी इट वॉज वेरी हार्ड टू पे दैट फीस ओके एंड इन माई लाइफ वॉट आई फील इज की सबसे ज्यादा जरूरी होता है इंसान के लिए मेहनत ठीक है तो उसी को जानने के लिए हम लोग देखते हैं कि किस तरीके से उसने इस माइल स्टोन को अचीव किया है एंड अभी भी वो वी हैड अ टॉक वेन आई आग जर अबाउट दिस सेशन तो शी वॉज लाइक की वी आर नेवर सेटिस्फाइड लाइक आज अगर आप देख रहे हो अब दस साल पहले देखो ना मैं क्या था मतलब आई हैव स्टेड इन अ वन बी एच के फ्लैट तो वैसा कुछ नहीं है तो आज भी वो थर्स्ट है बिकॉज वी आर एम्बिशियस इन लाइफ राइट तो मेक द फुल यूज ऑफ द सेशन आज कर वॉट एवर क्वेरीज यू आर हैविंग ओके तो नाउ आरुषि मोदी विल टेक इट फॉरवर्ड फ्रॉम हेयर थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच गिविंग ग्रेट थैंक यू सो यस इट्स एक्चुअली एन ऑनर टू बी योर एंड आई विल ट्राई टू मेक बेस्ट यूज ऑफ माई टाइम एंड योर टाइम टू बी एबल टू गाइड यू ऑल 
how, what, and all the questions that you may have, please, please feel free to ask. Um, so starting with, I will divide the session and the time here into three sections. First, how to study. Second, about jobs. And third being interview preparation. Maybe we will talk about inter interview preparation first and then followed by job. And um, yes, so starting with how to study, how did I know about actuarial science? How did I st uh, started with this journey? And um, how did I kept myself motivated enough to take 15 papers? So when I started, so I did not know a lot about actuarial science back then. I started five years back in 2016. First year St. Xavier's College, Bicom evening. Always used to curse the fact that I'm not in Bicom morning. And all my time is spent in just waiting for the college time to start. So yes, same back then when I started. So I did not know a lot about actuarial science. And uh, I, like everybody, every Bicom, every commerce student thinks that I should start for CA. I took my CPT examinations, but within me, I knew that I wanted to do something different. I wanted to take up a course that actually, um, that actually is in line with what I want to achieve. I was very keen on mathematics. I liked 11 and 12 mathematics, fortunately or unfortunately, I don't know, but I did like the derivatives and I did like the integration and therefore I just wanted to pursue and do more of it. So that is just the starting point. I did not know a lot about insurance. I did not know a lot about what is the type of work that I'm going to do and everything. So I just started off and then I came here and I took my first paper CT1. Um, it was in the old curriculum. That was the first paper that is CT1. Now in the new curriculum, it is a mixture of two papers, which is CT1 and CT5. That is CM1. So I started off with my CT1 preparation and all the things like time value of money and everything. I just started off with that. And gradually the interest within that curriculum, the interest within that course increased. And um, I did not think of giving the 15th paper back then. I did not think that they're just 14 to 15 papers that I need to take. So I just started off with my first paper. And then I started off with my second paper in the second attempt in the second term that I was taking. I cleared my first paper. I was very happy about it. Oh God, one paper out of 15 papers done. Now next 14 papers. So in my second diet also, I just took one paper that was CT3. It is CS, CS1 or CS2 now. But um, yes, so then that's how the journey started. Um, I was doing that together with college. So it was like that uh, in the morning, I have to take my tuitions in the morning. I'll have to solve papers. And then in the evening, I'll do my college and back to home. That's what my life looked like in the last, in the three years of my college. The motivation and the thing within me was that because I have started this course, I need to complete it. Like sir said that there are things that after four or five papers or after failing even the starting exam or failing second exam, the motivation sort of dies out. But for me, it was like, no matter whatever happens, I have to clear, I have to become an actuary. Actually, back then was very unheard of. You did not see a full qualified actuary. Like I never met a full qualified actuary until the end of my third year. Back when I went into my when I went into my office, that's when I got to know that okay, there are fully qualified actuarial people working, and they are live people, and they're not gods. So <laughs> that's where I started, and um, it was just that because I have started this course, I have to complete it. We live in an environment where people take multiple courses. People take CFA, people take FRM, people do CA. It was just, I am not denying the fact that every course has its own limitations. But within actually, I feel the thing that differentiates it from the rest of the courses is motivation and consistency. You actually need that thing within you that, okay, for the next five to six years of my life, I will be dedicated to this course. I will work, I will study together. You will see your other people, you will see your peers that they are done with college, they are done with their CAs. Now they have their weekends to themselves. But within this course, what I felt was needed is the consistency and determination that I have to clear the 15 paper. After that, I will not do anything. I will live my life. Uh, but for, for that, you have to sacrifice. You have to do a lot of sacrifices. I'll come to all of that later. But then, yes, that's how I started within college. My motivation, my target was that I will 
to all the CT series, which is the CSCM and CB series now. But that was my motivation that I will clear all of that within my college, and I did, and it did help me. That back when I went into my office, the papers that I was left with were the higher order papers, CP one, CP two, CP three, SP series, and SSE. So those were the papers that I was left with, and prior to that, I completed everything. So that sort of you know, um, that sort of gives you a sort of confidence within an office when you join as a fresher. There are other people as well. Mo some of them have CT series cleared. Some of them only start with a couple of papers, or some of them have no papers at all. So it's just the peer group in your office as a fresher batch when you are joining. So different people have different set of qualifications. Different people have different things. But um, when I looked for myself, I felt that okay, I'm in a good place. I'm in a better place. Now I will move to higher order papers, and I will get started with while working. You will face you will face difficulties. You will not have your weekends to yourselves. You will think that I'm working, I'm earning. Why do I need to study? You will have that sort of a uh, detachment from your course. That okay, I have done pretty much well enough. I'm earning a well enough amount every month. That's fine. I do not have to do further papers. But you know that motivation to a lot of people draw their motivation from different things. A lot of people think that you know if I clear this paper, I'll get more money. If I clear this paper, I will be a step closer to become an associate. I'll be a step closer to become a fellow. So a lot of people draw their motivation from different things, and maybe my motivation was the fact that I want to clear this course. I want to get done with it, and therefore within my working life also, like Sir said, that I failed one of the papers, which was CP1. CP1 is thought to be one of the most difficult papers of actuarial curriculum, and um, when I failed it, obviously I was very demotivated. I thought that. I do not have to take this again. I will do something else. I will not do actuarial. But again, this was a promise to myself, and something that because I have started it, I have to end it. There is nothing that can stop me or deter me from not completing it. I have to get it done. That was the thing that was within me. I started for preparing it for the second time. Looked for all the flaws or things that I missed in my first attempt, and then in the second attempt, eventually, fortunately, I could clear it. And then you know when you clear such a big paper, that again gives you motivation. Oh my God, when I can do this, why can't I do the rest? And again, that happened with me. It increased my confidence, and then I could take the other SP and SC series papers. But I did not realize that confidence will reach to overconfidence. That I failed in one of the most easiest papers of the curriculum, CP3. I did fail it. I felt that maybe I was overconfident enough that I thought that maybe I do not need to put in. A lot of time. I can do it. I can do it, and then you see what happened. The result was a fail. I failed it. So again, this journey, um, the fact that you know I've done it in the five six years, this journey teaches you a lot of things about the course, about yourself. What is something that you do not like? What is something that works for you? What is something that doesn't work for you? This thing, this course is that um, teaches a lot of things. teaches time management this is how you manage your work how you manage your studies and also how you give yourself time i am somebody who needs me time so this course has made me like i can multitask and i can manage my time well so yes i mean i failed in my last paper and then this in my last attempt that was the only paper that i couldn't clear and then finally i cleared him and actually so i mean there are there have been a lot of ups and downs there were people who motivated me there have been times when i thought that maybe i'm not worthy enough and there are times that i think that i i should do something else but the thing that because i have started it i have given the first paper i have given the second paper i will complete it until the 15th paper until i become an actuary no matter how much time it takes we humans create a lot of different timelines for ourselves but for me it was like like if you think about it there are just 13 papers for now and if you think that you take two papers or maybe just two papers every year um then it's 6.5 years which is like a very good enough time there are people who struggle with papers for 7 8 years so thinking time thinking your time thinking how you fit it into your routine thinking it that something goes on and along is something that has helped and um yes that is something that i will recommend to all of you um at this point do you have any question
cool. Um, cool. I mean, um, the next thing that I will talk about is interviews. So, like you all, I was also very unconfident about how to present um, myself in front of the interviewer. How will I say that you know I'm well enough for this job? Please provide me this. Job. I'm very good. Uh, how do I put that? Up? So, all of us clear papers. All of us. when we sit for the interview has two papers three papers most of us i would not say and um, we go to the interview and um, there are times what the interviewer would want to test both your technical skill and your soft skill what does it mean by technical skill? so it obviously depends on the role that you are up because all of you i think would be focusing on special role the starting role the technical skills from your study will be more important so for example you are applying to a life insurance company what do you think you think that they will focus more on the they will ask you questions from the ct1 ct5 paper i think which is m1 if i'm not wrong so they will ask about how will you you know determine the reserve of a policy how will you create how will you determine reserves for a life insurance policy all you need to say that back then i mean i'm not working within life insurance but i think it is just the present value of inflows minus outflows and that is how you determine please feel free to correct me if i'm wrong but yeah so that is what they are asking you out of it what is what um have you studied and whether you remember it or not so what i did when i sat for actuarial interview job i studied my papers i mean i just meant i had the material in front of me and i know that i want to take that job and therefore i just went through all the summary and everything so that it retains in my mind i have cleared that paper that means that i know things about it it is just a matter of time that i don't remember it a day before my interview so what it needs me to do it just needs me to go through the material however obviously this is not very easy this is this may take that time but it just the drive and the motivation that is i wanted that job and therefore i just went through all the materials and i just felt that okay this is then i felt confident enough to even sit for the interview and then i thought that because i have read all of it and because i have cleared papers so my technical skills part is taken care of i think i will manage it out so that is how i did for the technical i mean it can be it can sound very weird but that is what i did i just did not know that which paper i mean because i like i told you that i was done with my cd so i did not know which paper they will ask me a question from and i do not even remember that so what i just went i just went through all the materials took all the whatsapp material online just went through all the papers um went through the summaries and just sat for the interview so that was the technical the other part of the interview which sort of also depends um how well you are prepared about your technical soft skills so what are soft skills soft skills are your way of present way of communicating to the interview interviewer that you know stuff that you know things and that you are capable enough to do well um many a times what happens people know people are very well versed with technical skills people know how to do sums people know everything but they are unable to communicate it in the manner that the interviewer would have expected them so what what does that mean maybe you're not be maybe your body language is not confident enough maybe your expressions or maybe your way of speaking is not enough so a lot of things depend upon how you sit how you talk how um audible are you what is your voice tone and all of that so for me how that worked is because i felt that okay i have done my technical side of work so i'm capable enough and i can present it it just needs me to present it the way that i need to also a lot of interviewers these days ask whether you know tools whether you know excel whether you know vba i mean r is something that is already included within your curriculum i think and excel as well but a lot of interviews do ask that whether you know it so it's also like you know coding or something that is like a very that is something that could differentiate you for the other potential interview candidate so i mean just a bit of an introductory uh, knowledge about coding i did not know coding but i just felt that you know i had experience about excel in one of my internships that i took that i took and um, knowing excel helped me like when i told the interview that this was the work that i did on excel that really helped me so i mean doing things besides um i mean i i know that that is very difficult i have been in 
position where I did not get time. Like after my study and after my college, I did not used to get time to do anything else. But you know, sometimes when you clear paper, times you have done with paper, and before you start with the next paper, there's some sort of a time. So that time can be well utilized when you do things like Excel, some of Python, anything that you like. It's not like you have to know it all. Just that one thing that you know that you do good, one thing that can differentiate you from. And obviously, things like a lot of other things when um, interviewers um, they have this common questions across, like for whatever interview you go for, they will ask you to give you an introduction, something that you can prepare well in advance, something that you can go through other websites, something that you can something that you can write it up, and then you can prepare yourself. Not like you will have to present it as a script that you have learned it and you are just reciting it in front of the interviewer. It is more like you have read it. And um, you have the points in front of you, you have it handy, you have it in your mind, and then that you can communicate. So things like, you know, a brief introduction about you, things like why actuarial science, things like why this company. So that requires you to do some sort of background work. That, you know, why would you apply for this company? What do you think you can add value to this company? So things like that. So that can be very helpful when you do background work. And I just do not believe in the concept that you will just sit, uh, sit for the interview like that. I mean, I just, I mean, personally myself, I have spent two, three days prior to sitting for any interview to know that, you know, I know things. I can, I can actually answer things that they ask me. So, I mean, yes, there are things that companies usually for fresher roles ask, like, you know, why do you think companies, or what do you think we do here, etc. So things like that, you can, prepare well in advance from the job description, from the job role. So you should read all of those and you should just come prepared and sit for the interview. And then rest is all whatever it is. needs to be, like whatever it is written that will happen. But for yourself, like this is actually my mantra, whatever I have done. I just feel I will do everything under this. Like for example, with respect to exams, I will do the question answer bank, I will do the X series, I will do all the questions, all the previous year questions, everything. And then when I sit for the exam, I will think that, you know, I have done everything. There was nothing that I could not do. So whatever happens now is not my fault. That is something that is not written or that is something that God has other plans for me, but that is not my fault. So that is the sort of confidence that I went to into the interview that I've done everything. Now, so that is again, that was the thing that happened to me with the exams. That was the thing that happened to me with the interviews. That was the thing. So yeah, that I mean that is all about the interview preparation that you can do. And I think I think that is all about interview. If you have any specific questions regarding um interviews, please feel free to ask. Um yes. I mean, as a starting role, you would not know. Um, I mean, some people have a preference right at the start that, you know, I want to do life. I want to do non-life. Um, there are different roles of an actuary. Actuaries can go into traditional insurance companies like life, non-life. And there are other roles as well. Like you can go into wealth management, go into data, anything that you want to. So it just initially, if you know where you want to go, that is fine. If you don't know, just take a job, work there. And when you understand that, okay, this is how it works. If you like it, well and good. If you don't like it, then you can consider other opportunities if there are within the same company. If not, then you can consider your company. If the if, if it is possible, then that is I, nothing like it. If you are getting internships with, with college, that is, I mean, from my understanding back then when I used to do, it was very difficult to secure an actuarial intern while in college. But if you get it, then if you understand the work there and if you like the work here, then you can continue doing the same work. And if you don't like it, then try for other company while after your third year. Does, does that make sense? Does that answer your question? Are you sure? I mean, I don't think that you're convinced enough. Are you sure? For investment companies, so I will tell you from one of the experiences that I've had, I've applied for a trading firm um, while I was in an, um, like for, for internship, not for a full-time job. So what I did was, 
like the type of type of questions they do focus on is mathematics so they will ask you like i will ask you as an interviewer you know what is 13 into 5 divided by 6 that is the sort of questions they do ask and that they have asked me not always but they do ask questions like this so i mean how i prepared it because i was prepared i mean i knew that um this was the question that they're going to ask me so you know there are vedic mathematics that teach you all the um you know shortcuts right um on how to answer that sort of questions like what is the cube root of 5 <laughs> uh there are vedic mathematics like that i mean I, uh, the purpose is not to scare you but uh, when i appeared for that company that is how i did it I mean, I refer to the internet two days before my interview. Uh, what are the different types of? I mean, this is something that happens right from the beginning. I mean, even I did not know about Vedic mathematics. I did not know about mathematics shortcut. I used a calculator like you all. So um, it was just like a couple of a couple of days of preparation, and I went to the interview. And luckily, I knew the answer, and I just gave the answer the question that she asked me for. Um, there are also other questions with respect to investments, like if you want to go into investment type roles. there are questions like what is happening in the economy so economics related questions i mean it's not like you have to be well versed with everything but you will obviously study for cb2 i think it is ct7 for economics so you will know things from there so they will I mean you just have to relate the things that you have studied from the things that happen outside and just relate it that's all why do you need to refer to a paper when there is mobile apps for everything just have a good <laughs> just just download a good news app i mean i had been actively on twitter um to you know follow a lot of traders stockists economists so it's just not that i'm doing that actively in my mind i'm just scrolling that through and somewhere or the other i know that okay i have read come across this sort of a news um cnpc you know every indian um that is a good paper but i have never i could never study those big big papers and that seemed very monotonous and black and white to me so i did not do that i used to and you know what i used to do i also used to google what are the current news affairs before the interview because one of the questions that the interviewer most of the times asks what do you think is happening around so that is the <laughs> um <laughs> how to deal with distraction so um i mean um i don't know i i will just tell you personally that i was not very addicted to my phone since the starting i found i found <laughs> <laughs> लाइक like, मुझे मेरी तो सर दर्द करने लग जाती थी इफ़ आई यूज टू यूज़ फ़ोन फॉर लाइक ग्रेटर दैन एन आर सो दैट वर्कड फॉर मी एंड आई नेवर यूज माई फोन सो मच when you prepare in advance so i used to look like this is a very well known method but i used to tell my uh, sister that these are the questions just listen to me speak i don't know if she understood anything or not but my purpose was somebody is listening me and it is an interview setup what you can also do is speak in front of the mirror so when you speak the same line same thing in front of the mirror twice thrice it sort of gives you the confidence okay i am well enough to sit for the interview and i'll not stammer stammer is something that can eventually go and it comes from nervousness so when you have done all the preparation when you have done everything nervousness will definitely go away as in you will not feel nervous enough to stamp so i mean i am from bcom commerce um commerce um undergrad course um there are courses like economics and then within the du there are other courses offered like statistics um as well i think mathematics there is there's a bachelor of mathematics there's a bachelor of statistics bachelor of economics so it just depends i mean i do not know the curriculum of those courses but i think that you know after after cp1 this is just actuarial course there is no mathematics course there is no 
economics course obviously there can be overlapping material but there is no course that is coming to help you if you have done economics well then maybe investment type papers would help you if you have done um but as in from my experience after reading all the papers after studying all the papers i feel that taking the type of course matters primarily in the initial papers in the cs cb cm series after that it is more of the actuarial material actuarial work that you do that will help in your papers not any sort of this bachelor um bachelor courses i mean if they if they aisa hi karna tha to why would have they created a separate actuarial course so i mean everything after cp1 depends on actuarial course actuarial material is helpful but you can also consider courses like statistics economics mathematics i'm not very well versed with the curriculum but maybe that can help you and give a upper hand on some course <laughs> so i mean with the not like i would i mean um i don't know if i should say this but for for college i i used to study like a week maybe 2 3 days before <laughs> um but uh, i mean college examinations are definitely important something that you cannot take very lightly um <laughs> oh uh, the intention is not to contradict myself but um yes it's not like you know you do not have a bachelor's degree you will not get a job you will not get a job if you do not have the bachelor's degree with you. on the first day of your joining they will ask you for your bachelor's degree they will ask you for that consolidated mark sheet and the certificate of the degree that you get from the college so so that actually that entire thing sums up the thing that how important college is how important getting pass in all the college examinations is so so there are two phases in anybody's career for actuarial there's a there's a pre work phase college phase which is and then there's a working phase within the college phase i felt pretty comfortable in taking the papers getting in the morning anything like tuitions anything that is there that is something and then during the period before my evening college starts i used to sit in the library and study so that actually worked pretty well for me and i felt that i was giving enough time for every paper and it must be i think i think it must be like excluding hours spent in any other coaching institute or tuitions it was close to 3 to 4 hours per day while i was in college and over the weekends also it was just 3 4 hours not like i used to study the entire weekends while i was in college but in office when you work there are timings there are different things that come into picture there are things that like while you are working you may not like to study that day you are not motivated enough to study that day so what happens like for working i faced a lot of difficulties at my initial time but then i knew then i knew that i have to study so what i used to do i used to get up 6 7 i used to study for a couple of hours and then i used to start my office a lot of people prefer studying after office but that did not work for me i used to get up at um 6 7 i used to study a couple of hours and then i used to do my office come home and then over the weekends i used to study i mean i used to take the maximum time that i can study i used to study for 8 10 hours over the weekend so that i know that i can complete the clo course closer to the examinations so that is how i used to work <laughs> yes it is <laughs> Ah yes it is sorry So so I think um I don't recall any such conversations that I've had but I think once you get comfortable with the interview the interviewer is talking the interviewer is smiling and you get a you you get a feeling that you know this is in this is in my hands and ye ye kabu mein hai mere ye situation and then maybe you can use a couple of words in hindi and I don't think the interviewer would mind <laughs> that actually um 
I've never, I mean, six years back when I started with this course, um, obviously there was time that I sacrificed in terms of going out. Over the weekends, I knew my friends are partying. I did not go out. Knew I had to stay back and I had to study. After office, um, some people, like, you know, your friends, anybody is making plans that let's meet at seven, let's meet at eight after office. Um, I knew that I cannot go out because I have to study. I have to go home, I have to sleep early so that I can get up the next day. If I am out, I can't. So things, I think in terms of things that I have lost and in terms of things that I have gained, they seem very small. The things that I have lost, I mean, there were things, there were sacrifices which mattered to me a lot back then that, you know, going out, going to a wedding, going to a cousin's wedding, everything. But when I compare it to what I am now, I mean, not that I've done a very big job, very big deal, but now when I compare that against now, it all seems very small. It all seems very minute. It all seems like, okay, I mean, if that was the price that I had to pay to get it to this position, then that's fine. Doesn't matter enough. I mean, I would want to be in this position more than I want to be six years back. I don't want to be six years back. I want to be it now. That is how I will summarize it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yes, so I think that was all about interview. And um, finally, on the last topic that I wanted to touch on was jobs. So in terms of the roles, the question that you were asking about what are the roles that I can go into, there are two sets of roles. There are traditional roles, there are non-traditional roles. Traditional roles are when you are doing reserving, when you are doing pricing, when, I, when you are doing capital modeling. Capital modeling is something that when you are setting up the capital for an insurance company or anything that relates to insurance, anything that relates to, I think anything, anything that is under the umbrella of being insurance specific, I think that is something that will come within traditional roles. The non-traditional roles will be wealth management. The non-traditional roles will be environmental finance. You know how much climate change is in, um, how, how much climate change is being talked about. So how do we contribute as actuaries? Environmental finance, you know, we do all sorts of projections. Projections har jagauga. Time value of money har jagauga. So what we do is that, you know, we sort of project how much of the carbon emissions a company can do. And then we bring it to the present value and then we do all sorts of calculations. So actuaries can go into traditional, non-traditional roles. In terms of, in terms of traditional roles, there is there's something that everybody should know is the distinction between an industry and consulting. So what is an industry? I mean, um, people talk about, you will come across people who say that XYZ works in industry. You will come ac across people who work in consulting. So XYZ works in consulting. What is the difference between the two? Both of them are actuaries. Both, are them, both of them are doing actuarial work. But what is the difference? So in terms of difference, in terms of an industry role, whatever, like industry, what are industry? Aviva, LIC. So these are all big, big insurance companies and you are working there. So what are you doing there? What are you doing for that company? What are you doing for LIC? If you are in LIC, um, you are pricing their products. They are selling endowment assurances. They are selling any products. You are determining the price of that product. You are determining the reserves of that product. You are determining how much of capital they need to take against that product. So that is the work that you do within industry. Industry is all about that company. Every company specific information. Industry is just about that company, all about that company. What is consulting? Consulting is that you are sort of industry experts. So I'm an insurance industry expert. I come across wide range of clients like LIC, Aviva, Milliman, oh, sorry, met life all of these are clients coming to me and they're asking me what are the good practices of an industry so i mean i'm a consultant i'm an actuarial consultant actuarial life consultant aviva is coming to me and asking me that you know what are the different things what are the industry best industry practices that are followed across the market what can i do to make my products better what can i do you know what is happening within the market where they will not know about it i mean Aviva is just a company. How will it know that what is happening within the market? What is, 
what are the different things that are happening within the market what are the different things that are coming into the market how is the market dynamic changing so they will come to us as expert advice so that is what a consultant does that is what the consultants consultants deal with wide range of clients and and uh, and when you go into industry or when you go into a particular company or specific that company so also consultants also serve in the capacity of you know within the industry you set the reserves within the industry you have set xyz reserves consultants also work in that capacity whether where you see whether the reserves held by this company are okay or not so that is what that is also a part of the work that a consultant does so these are the two different um lines of work that you can do um within within an actuarial as an actuary so um, yeah i think that is all about the different jobs available and different jobs that you can go out for I mean, clearing more papers in the college. I mean, that is the thing that worked for me. And uh, after I understood the curriculum, after I understood that there are fifteen papers, after I understood that these are the papers that can be taken before examinations, so before before you know working, um, that sort of helped me. And that sort of that third year ka, jab third year ka last semester ho jayega, uske tak mera ye sab papers to clear ho hi jana chahiye. because i was very keen on completing as many papers as possible before i start working obviously there will be support that will be provided within your working environment as well and there will be other sorts of helpful things that will be provided to you there but for me it was just that i can devote maximum of my time college mein karna kya hai i mean obviously i'm not saying <laughs> obviously i'm not saying that you do not have to be part of fests or you do not have to be part of part of extra curricular activities or you do not have to do internships i mean i have done two internships while i was in college uh, together with clearing actuarial papers so for me it was just that i have to clear my actuarial papers i have to get done with these before i start working because while i start working i will focus on more specific papers so i don't know if you all know it but you know after doing your cp series there is sp series and sa series where you decide which role you want to go in whether you want to go into life whether you want to go into non life whether you want to go into banking or other sectors of within an actuarial work whether you want to go into pensions so i just felt that that will be the right phase for me to decide um while i am working that okay this is the phase that i want to go in this is an actuary that i want to become this life actuary non life actuary whatever i want to become but all the other papers before that i think that is something that can be done before if you think that can be done before office then why not i mean that is actually a win win situation for you that you have all your papers into you, with you when you start working this is completely a myth actually this is completely not true like i told you all that there are other roles that actuaries are going into so ifo ha ifo a has recently introduced a different banking course itself that relates to just banks okay there are papers introduced in conjunction with uh, actuarial society of south africa where they have introduced a completely sp paper for banking and sa paper for banking so that is completely a myth that actually is going to insurance obviously life and non life insurance are the traditional um roles of an actuary the starting roles of an actuary or the actuary i mean something that has been um since ages but nowadays actuaries can go anywhere they can go into banks like i told you they can go into um other roles like catastrophe i mean there are other things as well i will not go into details but um like i said data mining predictive analytics like you know you guys have all learned time series or will be learning time series time series can be applied into a variety of ways so actuaries can actually predict or climate change or weather change anything that can happen actuaries can go into very non traditional roles as well so yeah that's completely yes please Uh, in a financial area of actuaries you mean within banks or you mean outside of um, in terms of yeah so you can go into asset liability management 
where you know you compare the assets and liabilities and a lot of different things that comes but uh, roles like asset liability management roles like wealth management where you you are working in capacity like you know some mutual funds or other company and you are getting money and then you are asked to invest in different stocks and create those returns for the clients so that is a wealth management company wealth management fund management houses so there are other roles like that which you can go with in finance you can go into predictive analytics so predictive analytics is like that um not that you are god and you know what the stock price of will be at time 5 or in time 6 but a lot of people they use different 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 sort of statistical things that you will all be studying within your statistical paper or other papers uh, that they can use to you know project something like what to, what could be the potential value in future so things like that you can go into all of those roles please how important it is i mean this it just depends that you know how much you trust yourself and how much confident you are on your own ability not like when i started i was obviously also very um i mean i was not sure if i'll land up with a job or not so i mean i took frm as an option for me that you know i I complete FRM and I will have something besides actually, but it it is not important to have a backup. Is it like a lot of people who I know who work with me, they've just done actuaries, and a lot of people also start actuaries after they have got a job. So it is just not that. It is just the ability you trust yourself, the type of trust that you have within yourself, and um, and that is I think that is the thing that will help you to get through this course. because this course is such a long duration course obviously there will be things like maybe that will not happen but you should be you should believe yourself and i think i think um when online started when online examinations during covid when exams used to be held online um i just thought that you know it will be same as writing and my papers like we usually have the ability and we usually have the tendency to write the sums and solve it like that's how i did it at least so i mean when the thing online started i mean i did not i was not prepared enough i mean i was not i just did not know that what will be the problems i will face and i just sat for the online examination and i realized time flew by and i was unable to complete my paper and i lost i mean i i did not pass obviously because i left a major chunk of my examination so what i felt what i realized what helped me then i mean what i realized that you know it will take a tremendous amount of effort to open your laptop and take open that paper in another tab and open a word document in another tab and type it the way you would have done in an actual examination it will take a tremendous amount of effort i will definitely second anyone who has faced some sort of that issue but um that is what will give you marks that is what will pass you no matter how much you have seen the papers no matter how much you have written and solved it it will not help unless you type it unless you actually open it and sit for three papers and then and sometimes what happens um we do not we do not check our papers like maybe baad mein check kar lenge ya kuch bhi kar lenge hum dekhte nahi hai jo paper hum khud likhte hai so what i used to do i used to take that paper 3 hours ho gaye एक घंटे के बाद वापस आई विल रिविजिट दैट पेपर एंड आई विल आई विल मार्क इट लाइक आई एम एग्जाम लाइक आई एम द मार्कर आई विल यूज आई विल राइट द पेपर इन ब्लैक एंड आई विल यूज अ ब्लू कलर्ड इंक एंड आई विल जस्ट सी व्हाट मिस्टेक्स आई हैव डन सो दैट इज समथिंग दैट आई मिस आई मीन आई डिड दैट मिस्टेक इन माई इन वन ऑफ इन माई फर्स्ट अटैम्प्ट ऑफ ऑनलाइन एग्जामिनेशन एंड देन ओवर द ईयर्स आई हैव रियलाइज दैट दैट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट एंड सेकेंड मिस्टेक that i think about it is like not prepared enough as in sometimes what we think that maine ye kar liya maine wo kar liya that is more than enough now let's sit for the examination lekin hamare dimag mein ghumta rehta hai ki are maine to wo doubt nahi pucha ki are maine to wo x series solve nahi kiya are maine wo nahi kiya maine ko aur paper dekh lene chahiye the etc etc 
तो वो रिग्रेट वाली फीलिंग जब एग्जाम में आती है ना तो वो आपके पेपर में रिफ्लेक्ट कर जाती है कहीं ना कहीं ऑब्वियसली आई डो नॉट वॉन्ट इट टू हैपन विद एनी बट मे खुद से जब कॉन्फिडेंस नहीं होता है तो वो वो रिफ्लेक्ट हो जाता है कि मज़ा नहीं आ रहा है वैसे पेपर लिखने में वैसा जो जोश होना चाहिए वो आ रहा नहीं तो फिर उस चीज़ को मैंने फेस किया मुझे लगता था कि मेरा परफॉर्मेंस इफेक्ट होता था तो मैं करके जाती थी फिर मैंने सोच लिया कि कर लूँगी अब से ताकि एग्जामिनेशन वाले दिन रोंग ही नहीं कि यार मैंने ये नहीं किया मैंने ये नहीं किया मैं तो फेल ही होने वाली हूँ पक्का वैसा वाला, वाला फीलिंग नहीं लाना है तो दैट इज़ समथिंग दैट आई हैव डन So when I took a paper, um, sometimes when I used to take one paper, and for example, I'm feeling it. For the next paper, I will definitely take that paper, and I will also take a smaller paper with. मतलब ऐसा मैं because मुझे ऐसा लगता था कि ना कभी कभी आप जो पुराना पढ़ रहे हो आप वापस से वो रीटेक कर रहे हो तो मे भी आपका मन नहीं लगे पढ़ाई में उतना या आपको लगे कि यार मैंने तो बहुत पढ़ लिया इसको already first time. तो मैं उसके साथ ना एक दूसरा नया पेपर ले लेती ताकि थोड़ा इंटरेस्ट बना रहे कि अच्छा मैं दूसरा पेपर भी पढ़ूंगी और मैं ये पेपर भी बनूंगी और फिर आपको लगता है कि आपके पेपर्स भी क्लियर हो रहे हैं लाइक नेक्स्ट उस पे उस अटैम्प्ट में अगर मेरे दोनों पेपर क्लियर हो गए तो दैट इज़ लाइक नथिंग लाइक इट दैट इज़ अ वेरी गुड थिंग तो दैट इज़ समथिंग दैट आई यूज टू थिंक कि मुझे पेपर्स क्लियर करने हैं ऐसा नहीं है कि ये पेपर में लाइक आई नो पीपल हु फेल फॉर सम वेरी हार्ड एग्जामिनेशन लाइक सी पी एस पी फाइव इसे बहुत डिफ़िकल्ट पेपर होते हैं ईजी नहीं होते लेकिन ऐसा ऐसा नहीं है कि वो क्लियर नहीं होते तो मतलब अगर मुझे पता है लाइक मुझे पता है कि एस पी फाइव इज़ समथिंग दैट आई एम नॉट कॉन्फिडेंट ऑफ तो मैं क्या मैं ये भी करती थी कि मैं उसके लिए भी वापस पढ़ने लग जाती थी बिफोर रिजल्ट तो बिकॉज आई एम नॉट कॉन्फिडेंट एंड मे बी आई एम विल नॉट टेक इट तो मैं उसके लिए भी वैसे पढ़ने लग जाती थी और मैं नया पेपर भी ले लिया कि चलो मेरी इंटरेस्ट बने रहे और मैं लाइक like, कुछ नया पढ़ते तो ऑब्वियसली ज़्यादा इंटरेस्ट होता है रादर दैन डूइंग समथिंग दैट इज़ ऑलरेडी before so that is something that helped me complete my papers in advance and uh, dusra is like um matlab unmatched effort matlab mere ko matlab aisa lagta tha main kahin ja rahi hu mere ko aisa lagta tha yaar do baar revise ho gaye aur nahi revise karne ke lekin mujhe tha ki jab tak jab tak mujhe nahi lage ki ye ho gaya hai i am satisfied with it i will not stop i will complete i will study it obviously takes a lot of effort and i am not somebody who thinks but you know i ignored very i ignored other parts of my life i ignored my social life i ignored everything not that i am encouraging anybody of you to do it it's also important to have some some sort of leisure time as well but i ignored everything and i just wanted that mujhe padhna hai mujhe clear karna hai sab kuch kar lena hai clear karne ke baad enjoy kar lungi wo hota nahi hai actually iske liye hame dusri paper ke liye prepare karna hota hai but fir bhi like क्लियर करने के बाद एंजॉय कर लेते पढ़ लेते पहले प्लीज़ क्लियर कर लेते और फिर बाकी लोगों को देखते थे ना कितना एंजॉय करे तो ऐसा लगता था यार जल्दी पेपर क्लियर करो ताकि हम भी एंजॉय करें तो बस दैट दैट एक्चुअली हैड यू यू हैड अ क्वेश्चन तो I mean, it wasn't like the like the timelines were like I took CT one in August something, and I had my another paper in April, CT three in April. So in the time that I had there, I joined FRM part one tuitions, and I just did it. And then I had like you know your college exams will be there, your actuarial exams will be there, and then I had FRM exams as well. But I don't know there there is just different sort of. motivation or enthusiasm when i look back i don't think i am that motivated enough now if somebody will ask me to do something else i will not do it i will just defer it until it needs to be done but back then it was just like college ke time hai jitna pad sakti hu pad leti hu because after that when i start working i don't think i will be able to study so much so that's how i started and if you ask about me is if you ask me how frm and actuarial related so frm is about risk management if If you want to go into sectors like you know back then banking course was not introduced with an actuary, like it is just a recent thing when banking papers are announced. But back then it was not. FRM had all sorts of banking knowledge, like you know what are the options, what are calls, puts, what are swaps. So investments is something that you want to go in. It will definitely complement your actuarial. 
but now that i think that actuarial back like you know other course uh, like other papers with focus on these things have been introduced then you may want to compare the curriculum open the curriculum everything is online you may want to open a frm curriculum you may want to open the actuaries curriculum and compare if compare it if you think the topics are overlapping then maybe don't go with it and if you think that the topics are different and this is something that you're interested in then you can definitely go with frm as well i mean i got a paper exempted from frm so that is definitely that has been useful to me you can you can try any other questions I mean, there is a there is a lot of scope definitely within India itself. The government has, uh, you know, trying to increase the insurance penetration within the Indian market. It has been relatively low compared to other developed countries, but the government is trying uh, actively trying to increase the insurance penetration within the Indian market. And when there is insurance, then definitely there is there there are actuaries required everywhere. So actuaries will come into the picture, and actuaries will help you all out, help help the companies out in you know suggesting them ways or coming up with those competitive prices. ये price में अगर आप बेचोगे ना तो company जनता India India की population खरीदेगी. So that is where actuaries will be required. So definitely, I mean within within um within the within the Indian market, there's a lot of scope for the actuaries, and currently. not within just insurance sectors there are other sectors like we talked about the consulting sector the non traditional sectors they also want they also want your ability to be able to crunch data they also want your ability to be able to project they also want your ability to do time series so all of these will definitely help you land a job in any of the non traditional investment roles that you have been talking about when you say that you are an actuary and you have studied all of these topics they will definitely be they will definitely be attracted by the fact that you know you know all of this within a curriculum and then that will help you land a job you can any time take another paper so now that i am a investment actuary if i want to take a non life paper i can take it any time can you stop me i mean it just it just depends on the type of work that you want to do nobody can stop you to you can even take all the sp and sc series papers if you're interested it it just that um there is there is no regret with it i think that there will be no regret no never the fact that you are an actuary is itself a lot of puts a lot of um influence <laughs> no that will not happen at some point it is just we counted that you are an actuary it will not be matter it 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 will not matter that you know you are an investment actuary you are a pension actuary at some point in your career you will feel that sort of a thing that is all thank you so much everybody for coming on a sunday evening thank you How was the session everyone We'll keep uh, holding more such sessions so you all keep studying and yes I would like to add few points from my end also mera bhi tera ho gaya hai Do hi bacha hai So <coughs> you see ज्ञान सुनो पहले समझा ना हसो मत 
मेहनत थोड़ा ज़्यादा करना पड़ेगा ठीक है ना तो वेन शी टॉक्ड अबाउट जॉब्स राइट सो जॉब्स का ऐसा है कि अब जैसे मान लो किसी को रहता है कि मेरे को कोर जॉब चाहिए और किसी का रहता है कि मेरे को भाई कोई भी जॉब चलेगा तो यू शुड बी ओपन टू ऑल सॉर्ट्स ऑफ रोल्स इफ द कंपनी इज गुड इफ द प्रोस्पेक्ट इज गुड इफ द पे इज गुड तो डोंट गेट योर सेल्फ रेस्ट्रिक्टेड एट द इनिशियल लेवल ओनली यू गेट अ वेरी गुड नॉन ट्रेडिशनल रोल इन द ट्रेडिंग डोमेन इन अ बैंक इन द क्रेडिटरीज डिपार्टमेंट ओके इन बॉन्ड वैल्युएशन तो वर्ल्ड का सबसे ज्यादा पैसा बॉन्ड्स में है इक्विटी तो अभी धीरे धीरे करके प्रमोट हो रहा है बॉन्ड्स में सबसे ज्यादा पैसा है हम लोग जो बॉन्ड वैल्यूएशन करते हैं उसको हल्का में मत लो बॉन्ड में ही सबसे ज्यादा पैसा है आप भी घर में जाके पूछोगे कि पैसा कहाँ है तो बोलेंगे फिक्स डिपॉजिट में है या फिर कोई टाइप के कॉरपोरेट बॉन्ड में है बिकॉज फिक्स इंटरेस्ट आता है वहां से एल के बॉन्ड्स है गवर्नमेंट के बॉन्ड्स हैं तो वन शुड बी ओपन टू ऑल द फील्ड्स वैन अप्लाइंग फॉर अ जॉब एंड यू सी एज आई टॉक्ड अबाउट कि वो जो हेजीनेस होता है ना वो अभी नहीं हटेगा एंड दैट इज वाई आई एम कॉलिंग कि हाँ भाई उसने किया है एंड इट इज नॉट रॉकेट साइंस इट जस्ट दैट यू नीड टू बी वेरी कंसिस्टेंट एंड ये जो छोटा छोटा डेली का एफर्ट है ना ये हम लोग को डालना पड़ेगा आज जैसे मान लो मेरे टाइम पे इफ यू आस्क माई एल्डर सिस्टर और माई भैया आई नेवर यूज टू गो आउट मतलब कि वो जो पॉइंट है कि हाँ भाई अगर आपको शादी अटेंड करना है कि आपको पढ़ना है तो टेन में एक टाइम ऐसा होता था कि मतलब मैं शादी में जाता था जिस दिन खाने वाने का बहुत अच्छा मन होता था कि हाँ भाई आज बहुत दिन हो गया है तो सीजन का एक बार ना मतलब ऐसा नहीं कि आप पूरा टाइम जा रहे हो और वैसे वैसा नहीं होता है ठीक है एंड आप देखोगे ना आप क्लोजली अगर देखोगे तो ऐसे ही सब लोग करते हैं नहीं तो फिर वैसे ही होता है छः सात आठ पे रुक जाता है वो एंड वंस यू ग्रेजुएट दैट इज द पॉइंट वेन यू नीड अ फिक्स सैलरी इन योर हैंड यू आर आज के दिन पे बॉय गर्ल में पहला बात तो कोई फर्क नहीं होता है ठीक है तो इवन इफ यू हैव अ लॉट ऑफ मनी योर पेरेंट्स हैव अ लॉट ऑफ मनी बट स्टिल यू विल नॉट गेट दैट काइंड ऑफ रिस्पेक्ट फॉर दैट इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट टू स्टडी एंड इवन इफ यू आर हैविंग अ ट्रेडिशनल बिजनेस योर फादर और योर पेरेंट्स आर हैविंग अ ट्रेडिशनल बिजनेस दैट इज नॉट गोइंग टू वर्क इन कमिंग ईयर्स इट्स ऑल एडुकेशन एंड द सर्विस सेक्टर दैट इज गोइंग टू रूल द कंट्री तो फॉर दैट एडुकेशन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड कोई भी अब जैसे मल्टीपल कोर्सेज का बात हुआ तो मल्टीपल कोर्सेज क्यों लेना है अब जैसे एक को अगर तुम अच्छा से कर लेते हैं ना इसके अंदर बहुत डेप्थ है इस कोर्स के अंदर बहुत डेप्थ है तो इफ यू कंप्लीट दिस कोर्स एंड एक बार जब तुम जॉब में जाते हो उसके बाद आई डोंट थिंक इट मैटर्स इफ यू आस्क कर इज सी गेटिंग पेड फॉर द एफ आर एम एक्स्ट्रा नो इट्स जस्ट अ थर्स फॉर नॉलेज एंड शी हैज गिवन वन ईयर ऑफ टाइम कंप्लीटली टू एफ आर एम तो शी कुड हैव कंप्लीटेड द कोर्स वन ईयर अर्लियर ऑल्सो ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड इन दिस पॉइंट ना उन, उसने कंप्लीट कर लिया हम लोग फर्स्ट जाते हैं जैसे मेरा नहीं हुआ मैंने भी एक लेवल दिया फिर मैं सेकंड लेवल हुआ ही नहीं तो फिर क्या होता है कि आप लगता है इसमें भी आपका आधा दूर है वो भी आपका आधा दूर है यू नीड टू ट्रस्ट दी प्रोसेस एंड टॉकिंग अबाउट दी स्कोप आज के दिन पे विश्वास करो मेरे हाथ में भी ऐसे एक भी सीवी नहीं है कि जिसमें मेरे को ऐसा है किसका लगवाना है जॉब जिसका एक दो पेपर था ना जो लोग हम लोग का इंटर्न करे थे वो लोग का भी जॉब लग गया एक पेपर वाले का भी जॉब लग गया तो अभी इंडस्ट्री बहुत सोक इन कर रहा है दिस इज द राइट टाइम यू एंटर दी मार्केट ओके सो एंड प्रोस्पेक्ट्स आर रियली वेरी गुड एंड इफ देर इज अ टाइम किया भाई ऐसा होगा प्रोस्पेक्ट्स आर नॉट दैट गुड आई विल अपफ्रंट टेल यू एंड आई हैड अ हेल्थी डिस्कशन विथ ऑल माय स्टूडेंट्स दोज आर वर्किंग इन द इंडस्ट्री वेदर वी शुड डू एन एम बी ए और नॉट एट वॉट पॉइंट सो आई एम ऑलवेज ओपन फॉर दोज डिस्कशन ओके बट यू नीड टू ट्रस्ट दी प्रोसेस एंड वन थिंग विच was missed in the session is she like she pointed out in the early early uh, talks that consistency is very important aapko abhi nahi samajh mein aa raha aapko jab char paper clear ho jayega na aapko lagega aapko ek rest lena chahiye aisa nahi hai aapko agar abhi lag raha hai aapke paas mein time hai ek aur paper lene ka ab karo waisa koi baat nahi hai fail hi dunga zyada zyada se zyada at least wo content to padhai ho jayega na bahut zyada bhi nahi lena hai lekin ha agar lag raha hai ki ho sakta hai to karo us cheez ko and nowadays uske time pe utna awareness nahi tha but ab ab socho na आउट ऑफ थर्टीन इलेवन पेपर्स का आपको कंप्लीट तो सोचना ही नहीं है मतलब समझ रहे हैं आप लोग पूरा मतलब ऐसा तो वो चीज अब अब वैसा नहीं होगा अब जो नए एज जो है लाइक अब जो तुम लोग जो बनेगा ना तुम लोग फाइव ईयर्स में पूरा कोर्स को कंप्लीट करेगा 
तो ये चीज बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है एंड क्या पढ़ रहे हो मार्क्स से ज्यादा वो इंपॉर्टेंट है कि क्या कंटेंट स्टडी कर रहे हो लाइक शी हैज कोडर नाइनटी वन ऑल्सो शी हैज कोडर सिक्सटी एट ऑल्सो अब वो मैटर नहीं करता है अब वो चीज मैटर नहीं करता समझो बात को जो नॉलेज जो कैरी कर रही है वो इंपॉर्टेंट है मार्क्स अब मैटर ही नहीं करता पहले तो मार्क्स मिलता भी नहीं था एक्चुअल में दिस वॉज द रीजन कि मार्क्स मिलता नहीं था इट वॉज जस्ट अ पास और अ फेल ठीक है तो ये चीज है एंड इट्स ऑल हार्डवर्क इन लाइफ आई एम टेलिंग यू फाइव ईयर्स तुम लोग को बार बार इतना कोई नहीं समझाएगा इट्स जस्ट आने वाला पांच साल फिर बस इनकमिंग पैसा होगा बस और कुछ नहीं होगा तुम लोग इमेजिन भी नहीं किया लाइफ कैसा हो सकता है तुम लोग खर्चा करने के लिए सोचना नहीं पड़ेगा अभी जैसे तुम लोग तो लो कोई जूता वूता लेते हो मम्मी दस बार बोलती होगी बेटा ये क्यों कर रहा है ऐसे क्यों कर रहा है इतना पैसा क्यों खर्चा कर रहा है कोई बोलने वाला नहीं होगा उसके लिए मेहनत करना पड़ता है राइट right? तो वो चीज़ है एंड कभी ऐसा मान लो कोई पेपर फेल हो गया तो हो गया उसमें क्या है साढ़े का साथ होगा छः का साथ होगा तो वैसा नहीं है भाई मैंने चीज़ें चेंज होते हुए देखी अपने एज में मैंने लास्ट दस साल में जो ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन मैंने अपने में देखा है ना मतलब होता है एक्चुअल में होता है बस उसके लिए हार्डवर्क बहुत करना पड़ता है तुम लोगों को मतलब अब जैसे उस समय लगता था कि यार कभी हो पाएगा कंप्लीट आई वाज आल्सो ऑफ द ओपिनियन कि नहीं भाई तीन चार पांच कर लेते हैं देन विल सी व्हाट व्हाट कैन बी डन बट अब ऐसा नहीं है यार इट्स इट्स इट कैन बी डन एंड लाइफ इज रियली गुड अब उससे पूछो नाउ शी इज अभी वो जा रही जयपुर तो पॉइंट है कि लाइफ इज वेरी गुड ना अब क्या है अब सोचो अब पढ़ना नहीं है और उसको मन होगा तो पढ़ेगी नहीं तो नहीं पढ़ेगी तो वो चीज़ के लिए आपको एक फेज होता है पाँच साल है नहीं तो फिर आप पचास साल अपना स्ट्रगल करोगे थर्टी फोर्टी फिफ्टी थाउजेंड में आप स्ट्रगल करोगे आपको जॉब के लिए स्ट्रगल करना पड़ेगा तो ये चीज़ आपको सोचना पड़ेगा कि आप क्या कर रहे हैं आप अपना टाइम कहाँ इन्वेस्ट कर रहे हैं मैं अपने एक भी मिनट वेस्ट नहीं करता हूँ मेरे को नहीं अच्छा लगता मैं नहीं करता मैं एक भी एक भी मिनट में अपना वेस्ट नहीं करता हूँ स्कूल टाइम से मेरा याद है मैं अपने एक भी मिनट वेस्ट नहीं करता हूँ वो वो एक टाइम पे अर्जावस था ना कंपनी का ना अर्जावस में उसका इंटर्नशिप भी था उसका शाम को कॉलेज भी होता था वो सी टी भी दी थी मेरा क्या था हम पढ़ाते थे पढ़ते थे फिर मेरे को खुद से पढ़ना पड़ता था पूरा चीज आर्टिकलशिप के साथ में मैंने किया तो वो 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 फेज था एंड उस समय शाम को ऐसा एनर्जी आता था ना कि भाई अब अब पढ़ना है बिकॉज फुल डेज ऑप्टिममली ऑप्टिमम यूटिलाइज ये का एक ऑप्टिमम यूटिलाइजेशन होता है कि भाई हाँ इतना दिन मैंने ऐसे किया अब जब करोगे ना उस तरीके से आपको समझ में आएगा कि हाँ भाई आपका टाइम कहाँ जा रहा है नॉट अननेसेसरी इतना इतना जाना आना वो सब छोड़ दो कुछ काम नहीं आएगा अभी जो कॉलेज अभी जैसे तुम लोग सब कॉलेज जा रहे हो राइट इतना फ्रेंड्स बनेगा अब पूछो उससे मेरे से पूछो एक भी फ्रेंड नहीं है ऐसा बहुत कम जो लोग टिकते हैं लॉन्ग टर्म के लिए तीन चार मैक्सिमम लोग जो बोलते हैं ना नेटवर्किंग नेटवर्किंग हार्डली कोई भाई बात तक नहीं करता है खास करके जहां पर कॉलेज जाना कंपलसरी है आपको लगता है कि हैंग आउट करने से एक अच्छा नेटवर्क बिल्ड होता है बकवास है सब तीन साल के बाद कुछ फर्क नहीं पड़ता है तो ये चीज आपको समझना पड़ेगा कि अपना टाइम कहाँ इन्वेस्ट कर रहे हैं किसके साथ इन्वेस्ट कर रहे हैं ठीक है तो सोच के आप करो ठीक है थैंक यू वेलकम गो